Okay, okay. So the arrow there is negative 60 kilovolts right. coming from the trigger head going through the switch, going to the screw. The big going one. To, well, going to the top, which eventually, which is eventually. It doesn't matter what happens after this. The main thing is this creates ions. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the electricity very rapidly. It's like filling up a pool. Mm -hmm. Imagine this is a tiny, tiny pool. Very rapidly the electricity fills up this pool and the positive electricity overflows into the top plate. And then the positive electricity flows straight to the top plate and out to the anode. That's the correct functioning. Mm -hmm. The bad functioning is the electricity flows horizontally across this resist this insulator to the top plate. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that creates a negative pulse because the negative electricity travels straight to the anode. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's bad because. First, the electricity is going one way, and then it's going the other way. The filaments can't form. Everything is okay, right. messed so up. So you're saying the bad one is when this one just never gets the positive charge from the capacitor. Well, that's the first thing that happens is is negative, is uh -huh. horizontal. Uh -huh. Now, if you look at this drawing, this drawing is pretty similar to the way we have. We call this the pin. What is the pin? This central copper thing. Uh -huh. Right now, this is very similar to the drawing in which the distance from the pin to the bottom is almost exactly the same as the distance of the plate to the bottom. So what this means is that after the, the negative voltage comes down, it comes across to here. It's still close enough so that 20, 30, 40 nanoseconds later, the mm -hmm. spark travels vertically, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it can do so because as we move the pin further away, we compensate by reducing the gas inside, which we can control very easily. So when there's little gas inside, it's easier for it to break down across this gap. Within the 20 nanoseconds, you mean? After, in other words, first comes this negative pulse, mm, which is bad, and then, it breaks. and then it breaks down. And that's what was confusing me because when this was closer, let's exaggerate and make it down to here, mm -hmm. then there was so much gas that although it could break down across this little gap, when it went horizontal, it didn't break down at all because the gap, the, the, the distance was too great for the amount of gas and the so switch didn't that fire. Gives you negative voltage. So in both cases we got negative voltage, but with side setup we got most more or in, in one case we got no correlation between the switch firing and the negative voltage because the switch could do both. It could break down negatively first. Mm -hmm. and then fire. So that explains why there's no correlation, I think. And if this... Correlation between what and what? Between the amount of negative voltage we get and the number of switches that don't fire. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's, that's, I think, solves the mystery. And that means that to get rid of this, we almost certainly will need the Teflon, because the Teflon... What do you mean by this? 
to get rid of this horizontal breakdown. Mm -hmm. And where is the Teflon going to be? The Teflon is going to replace the ceramic here. Mm. So the Teflon resists the surface breakdown, which is what it's called, nice. much more than the ceramic, okay. even though that's kind of counterintuitive because the ceramic's a much tougher material than Teflon. Right. The Teflon loves itself so much that... Okay, thank you. Okay.